What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mass Effect. We're here with Atticus Shepard, and we're on the Normandy inside the medical facility. We need to head to the Citadel. Our plan is to head to the Citadel and try to convince the Citadel Council that Seren has gone rogue and he's attacked the human colony of Eden Prime, this, that, and the other. We need to expose him. But before we do that, we need to head out to the rest of the Normandy here and check in on the crew, make sure everyone's good, call up the speed with everything. Hold on. Eight station, replenish medical. All right, so we got codex stuff. We need to jump into the codexes too. Before we actually get to the Citadel, I want to check in with, see what a few of the races are, like the Turians. We have a lot of stuff with Turians so far, and we really don't know much about the species. We'll jump into the codexes before we actually get to the Citadel. Let's just talk to people first and catch our bearings, catch our breath out of that mission. Hey, Commander. What's up, Ash? I'm glad you're okay, Commander. The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. Jenkins will be missed and soldiers die. Well, that's a bit rough, huh? Jenkins was a valuable part of this crew. Part of me feels guilty over what happened. If Jenkins was still alive, I might not be here. You earned it and soldiers die. We can still say the soldiers die. I would think at this point Ash did earn it. She definitely earned her place out there. She was running for her life and literally helped us to get to the end where the beacon was. I say she earned it, yeah? You're a good soldier, Williams. You belong on the Normandy. Thanks, Commander. That means a lot from you. I've never met anyone who was awarded the Star of Terra. The Star of Terra. Remember way back? Well... Well, not way back, but I said that the War Hero background, I would think that with this War Hero background, the Shepherd probably got like a uh, Medal of Honor, but I didn't know if they called it a Medal of Honor in this game, so it looks like it's called the Star of Terra. I could imagine that is probably, if we can read about in the codexes, that's probably a Medal of Honor, the same thing on the lines of it. I just did my job. How you holding up? There's nothing special about me, Williams. Anyone would have done the same. Held off an entire enemy platoon? Alone? With all due respect, Commander, I think you've got somebody watching over you. Things were pretty rough down there. Are you okay? I've seen friends die before. Comes with being a Marine. But to see my whole unit wiped out, and you never get used to seeing dead civilians. But things would have been a lot worse if you hadn't shown up. The mission got pretty dicey, but I don't believe it fully failed. If it did fit well, <laughs> that beacon did it. It definitely blew up. So maybe it did fail in a way. We couldn't have done it without you, Williams. Thanks, Commander. I have to admit, I was a little worried about being assigned to the Normandy. It's nice when someone makes you feel welcome. <laughs> don't disappoint me. Shepard can be an ultimate asshole. Oh my word. I think you're going to fit in here just fine, Williams. Thanks, Commander. All right, we got some Paragon for that. Let's talk to Dr. Chakwa, see if we're, you know, good to go. Walk around, possibly get back into the fight since we got our ass completely whooped. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? Personal questions, Captain Anderson and Caden Alenko. How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me. Too safe. Too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my she part. Technically wants to be a combat medic here. She's not out there in the fighting in the combat, but she wants to be part of a crew that is full force out there fighting. She doesn't just want to be a regular old medic back in. I'm gonna say, let's just say the only thing we can relate it to is probably a local hospital or something like on Eden Prime. We didn't see any local hospital, but there was an option to go to a local hospital. Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth. Or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. Well, there we go, Chakwas. We all have a job to do. And you got yours. What do you know about Captain Anderson? 
I've served with him for a few tours now. He knows when to let things slide and when to crack the whip. The crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. Well, he definitely seemed like he cares. How well do you know the lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record, over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. Shepard is probably configured with the L3s. But we don't know. We need to look at his background and see if they actually tell us or if anyone actually tells us. Caden is configured with the L2 and the L2 gives complications. What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. He just gets migraines. Well, just getting migraines is not good. Migraines are terrible, depending on how bad you actually get them. It can literally cripple you. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. <laughs> oh my god. Was that the first one? I should go? <laughs> Wow. All right, let's look around for codexes. See if there's any codexes on the Normandy. Or, well, I don't see anything. It seems pretty easy to spot stuff at a distance. So let's talk to Kate. Glad to see you're okay, Commander. All right, Kate. Glad to see you're okay, Commander. Well, he has nothing. Oh, here's Anderson. What's up, Anderson? Go speak to Joker when you're ready. Tell him to bring the Normandy into dock. Damn, let's talk. These beds, though. Look at them cots. Wow. Looks just super comfortable. Alright, well, let's see. Ash is good. Wait, hold on. There's something over here. Shepard's locker. We have an edge, a hurricane, and a hammer. We probably already have these. It's... Oh, so we can reduce one thing to Omnigel. We don't have to... Reduce it. I thought it said reduce all, so that is very good. That is very good indeed. But we'll take more codex unlocked for that. And we got XP for that. Wow, we are on a different. We're on a, the Normandy quarters here. Let's go, let's hit up the elevator. It's definitely taking us down. So it's going to take us down to whatever the hell else is down here. Holy moly. In the Normandy's vehicle bay, using a squad member's locker allows you to assign equipment to them. New equipment may be purchased from the requisition officer. Got it. There is their locker over here. There's Ashley and there's Caden. We can mess with their stuff because... What? All right. Yeah, right here. It doesn't let us... Do it from the inventory spot right here. And then look, we have a Alliance Requisition Officer. Hey, Commander. Looking for some extra supplies before you head out? What have you got? Whatever you want. Armor, weapons, mods. It's not standard Alliance issue, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. I don't think so. I ain't paying you and then pay you. Um... You would figure that everything would probably be free in the Alliance military, right? But this guy must be doing stuff on the side. Why should I pay you for my weapons and armor? My stuff doesn't come from the Alliance. I have to purchase it myself, and it's not cheap. Hell, the licenses alone have set me back more than I'd like. But no licenses, no goods. Without the goods, I'm out of a job. What are licenses? Why do you need them? Manufacturers sell licenses. Each license allows me to buy and sell a certain brand of products. I already have several basic ones, but you'll need to buy more if you want me to bring in different brands. Many of the best licenses are hard to get, but they're well worth the cost if you can find them. We buy more licenses, and the more licenses we buy, his stock varies on the stuff that he gets. We need to make sure we're buying these... Let's just call them rare licenses, or just any licenses we find? What do the different manufacturers offer? There are too many for me to keep track of, but each license will explain what it's good for. How often will you get new items? Well, that depends on how many licenses you've purchased. 
but I'll rotate items on a regular basis regardless. And any time we land someplace with a big enough port, I'll buy, sell, and trade whatever I can. Check back often. I need to move items quickly, so only the most basic items will be stocked consistently. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Does he have licenses to buy, though? Oh! He's got Metagel upgrade and then Grenade upgrade. 200 each. How much do we have? 1,460. What is the currency in this? Let's go ahead and get Grenade upgrade. One. Oh, well, what did that do? Increases maximum units of Metagel by one. That is probably what the Grenade did. So let's buy the Metagel as well. Everything else... You can go ahead and keep for now. Anything else down here? Inspect the Mako. Look at the fucking Mako. Just chilling here right in the uh, cargo bay. Wow. Anything on this computer? No. And then I don't think we need to mess with their inventory. You know, back to Caden a little bit. What the hell is Caden? I was trying to jump into the squad, but... We can't really look at anybody but Atticus right now. I guess we're going to have to wait until we get out. Does this say his class? Because Shepard is an adept. Ashley is a soldier. I can think Caden is either, I would think, between an adept, vanguard, or sentinel. But I'm thinking a sentinel. Shame about Jenkins, Commander. Shame about Jenkins, Commander. We have a bunch of more things to get. Wow. Elemental Zero Core. Did we get it? I think we got it. Shame about Jenkins, Commander. Yeah, it is a damn shame about Jenkins. They should have gave him more better armor. Shame about Jenkins, Commander. Poor fella. Alright, well, I don't think there's any one else that we could possibly talk to here. The only other person on the Normandy that I can remember was on the Normandy from the first time we were on the Normandy before we went to Eden Prime was Joker and Presley. But I think we touched ground with every single person so far. Both least lead up, right? I'm pretty sure they both... Oh, here we go. Well, there's Presley. This is where Chakwas and... Alright, Nihilus was. Or Chakwas and Jenkins and Nihilus was in here. FTL com link? We have... We're picking up a great deal of stuff. It would be awesome if we could, like, take the mouse cursor and click on the codex when it actually comes up down there. We'll have to just jump into the inventory and kind of read them randomly. What's this? Can we do anything with this? Only the commanding officer may specify, get this ship out of here. Let's go. What is this one? Nav manual 141. More codex stuff. See how it, co it comes up behind my big fat head? I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on the crew. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Nothing. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on the crew. Alrighty. Well, there is Joker. Let's do the codex stuff, which, because I have a feeling we're just going to go right to Eden Prime here. Go up and talk to Joker, and then we just tell him to go to the Normandy. So, the first thing we want to do is, I want to at least check out Roughly Turian. 1,200 years ago, the Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council to fulfill the role of galactic peacekeepers. The Turians have the largest fleet in Citadel space, and they make up the single largest portion of the Council's military forces. As their territory and influence has spread, the Turians have come to rely on the Salarians for military intelligence and the Asari for diplomacy. Despite a somewhat colonial attitude towards the rest of the galaxy, the ruling hierarchy understands they would lose more than they would gain if the other two races were ever removed. Turians come from an autocratic society that values discipline and possesses a strong sense of personal and collective honor. There is lingering animosity between Turians and humans over the First Contact War of 2157, which is known as the Relay 314 incident to the Turians. Officially, however, the two species are allies, and they enjoy civil, if cool, diplomatic relations. This guy has a comforting voice. My word. 
Well, the codexes are voice, and I can't say that I'm not happy about that because I read like an absolute putz. The Turians really do see honor roll. It said something about us and the Turians having a first contact war of 2157. There must be a lot of animosity, and it said it, between humans and Turians. So that's something to actually watch out for. All right, well, interesting enough, and they joined the council roughly 1,200 years ago. They must be... The council, Citadel Council, must be very old indeed. So these, let's just say it right here, roughly 1,200 years ago, the Turians were invited to join the Citadel Council. These other races found each other over 12,000 years ago, and we just now found these other races. I would say, I, I don't think it's just now. It has to be within, wait, 2157 was the time that we had a first contact with alien species. I don't know what the date is right now, but that's something to remember. Can we learn about the Geth extinct races? 50,000 years ago, the Protheans were the only spacefaring species in the galaxy. They vanished in a swift galactic extinction. Only the legacy of their empire remains. They are believed to have built the mass relays and the citadel, which have allowed numerous species to explore and expand throughout the galaxy. Prothean ruins are found on worlds across the galaxy. While surprisingly intact for their age, functioning examples of Prothean paleotechnology are rare. Time and generations of looters have picked their dead cities and derelict stations clean. Some believe the Protheans meddled in the evolution of younger races, the Hanar homeworld of Kaje, for example, shows clear evidence of former Prothean occupation. The presence of a former Prothean observation post on Mars has caused a rebirth of interventionary evolutionists among humans. These individuals believe the god myths of ancient civilizations are misremembered encounters with aliens. It might very well be. You think that the Protheans built the Citadel, they built the mass relay, so they're ultimately pushing these species forward so freaking fast. And then if you are to believe in any type of religion or whatever, and you, you think that Protheans are definitely godlike beings, if you would think about it, because who's to say that the Protheans never meddled and some races actually seen the Protheans, right? Does that make sense? What if the Protheans showed up in their world and technically helped them? And then they went off, kinda? Does that make sense? Like, Protheans showed up, their ships or whatever, and the other races... Is this just like a, what do you think they did? Did they conquer the other ones, or did they just leave them there and let them find Basically, Protheans come into our system, right? Put something on Mars, and then that's it. Finally, we grow, we get our, you know, ships able to go to Mars or whatever. And then we find it there. Protheans are just sitting back just waiting for humanity to bloom, get to Mars, find the stuff, and then expand to the rest of the galaxy. But it's just so, they're so interesting, wow. And then... The Geth are a humanoid race of networked AIs. They were created by the Quarians 300 years ago as tools of labor and war. When the Geth showed signs of self-evolution, the Quarians attempted to exterminate them. The Geth won the resulting war. This example has led to legal, systematic repression of artificial intelligences in galactic society. The Geth possess a unique distributed intelligence. An individual has rudimentary animal instincts, but as their numbers and proximity increase, the apparent intelligence of each individual improves. In groups, they can reason, analyze situations, and use tactics, as well as any organic race. Geth space is located at the trailing end of the Perseus arm, beyond the lawless Terminus systems. The Perseus Veil, an obscuring dark nebula of opaque gas and dust, lies between their space and the Terminus systems. We only have a little bit on the Terminus systems, and it was seeming that the Citadel space is one thing, Terminus systems another, they're kind of split, and then past the Terminus is where the Geth reside. 
300 years ago, the Quarians made them. We'll need to read about the Quarians as well. And that would be enough for now. I think I want to read about the Citadel, but let's just go. We'll dedicate codexes to the ends of the episode. This is just out of the norm because we're going to the Citadel and we needed to learn about a few things before we actually go there. And the rest of stuff that we get along the way, like I said, we're going to do it towards the end. Is there anything here? What's up, Joker? Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. <laughs> taxpayer money? Yeah, sure. Ascension, flagship of the Citadel fleet. Well, size isn't everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower, too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side, then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower. Normandy out. Normandy, this is Alliance Tower. Please proceed to dock 422. Quite grand. This is an outrage! The Council would step in if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of the Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Seren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. They're blind. They do not seem to helpful at the moment. They're not discussing anything until we actually get to the the council hearing. Wow. Did you see the first let's just take it in for a second because it was so grand coming into the citadel like I still have chills, the hair sticking up on my arms, but wow, like the music, just the, we'll seeing the Normandy whip in between ships, like how fast, like the Normandy is so fast, could you imagine? We need to really, I want to read about the Normandy too, because it's such a, and then there was a the thing about the uh, stealth systems and stuff, the Normandy is something else, but then we have the council here is not willing to, they don't seem like they're too happy with humanity, at least that's what it seems so far. I'm not going to sit on my ass just because the Council doesn't want to do anything. If they won't stop Saren, I will. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault, not his. Then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. And that's why I hate politicians. Well said, Ash. Well said. Important locations are marked on your map. Press M to access. Let's see. If Shepard... 
is going to was attempting to be a specter and we pretty much bungled this damn mission you really think the council is gonna let us in at this point absolutely fucking not can we talk to anybody Ash? i can't tell the aliens from the animals that's a bit rough don't you think begin manual overload oh Alliance Patrol report. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol of the Argus Row cluster. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system, but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do we need to send in a recon team? Send in Shepard. Sure is peaceful here. Anything else, Ash? Well, they've built themselves quite the lake. Wonder if anyone ever drowned in it. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Let's go talk to. Let's mingle. Let's. Wow. Um. We, we are here. Volus and Elcor office. Of Vina. Let's. Let's go this way. Check out some of this stuff and then head over here. Let's just mingle and talk to people. That's. Yeah. Let's just do that. Let's. Just. Let's just take it all in. I don't know... I don't know what to do with my damn hands. I'm so excited to fucking be here. We have a Vina over here. Assembly... Embassy receptionist? Good day, Commander. The human ambassadors up the stairs, first room on the right. Let's take it in. They really made some awesome looking aliens. I... Hands... Like... The minds that made these aliens so far are extraordinary, as well as, like, like just putting it all together. Wow. Commander, have we met? Have we met? You know who I am? Yes, I receive reports on all newly arrived dignitaries and notable people. What is this place? This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Savina. What's that? Oh, Avina is the virtual guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. We already asked location? Or, hold on. What is this place? This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Avina. What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the Embassies. You seem to be distracted. The embassies are the hub of all Citadel politics. <laughs> when you represent trillions of citizens, it tends to get a little busy. I can only imagine. Have fun. I don't envy your job. I should be going now. Have a pleasant day. Level up, baby! Welcome to the Presidium. Can we level Allow up? Allow me to be your guide. I think we need to level up. Welcome to the Presidium. Allow me to be your guide? Okay, come on. Siri? Greetings, and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. Are you real? So are you a person or a program? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence, programmed to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Basically a tour guide, then. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. Whoa, she has a good deal. We have CSEC, embassies, specters, and Citadel Council. Let's just start at the top. Sure. I want to know more about Citadel security. Citadel security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. We should go talk to him. Because maybe CSEC would have any information on Saren as well. It's so comforting on the Citadel. The music is so comforting. And just sitting here talking, learning stuff. I love this so much. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, 
roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. 19 years. We've been in space flight, seeing other alien species for about 19 years. Why was humanity opposed? What did she say? Despite some rather local opposition, wow. Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. Do you agree with their decision? I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. It would be it's pretty obvious that humanity, the Citadel Council so far with the races that are here, probably sees humanity as a great asset already. How come the Volus were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. They established many new colonies and trading outposts, and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. Just an embassy? Well, they, these Volus have been around for a long spell. Why weren't they made a council race? The council races have extensive responsibilities. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the Citadel. That's pretty rough, don't you think? What makes them lesser species? They've been in the fucking embassy for so long. Make them a council race, you would think, right? That's pretty damn arrogant. I apologize if my personality has offended you. Please submit all formal complaints in writing to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. Basically, that was just, oh, the Volus are the Volus. They're so a side race. They're not good enough to be in the Citadel Council. That's kind of wrong, huh? Embassies... Spectres. Do you know anything about Spectres? The term Spectre is derived from the branch of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. Each Spectre agent is handpicked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectres answer to no law or authority except the Council itself. Wow, Spectres are serious. Let's go back to the Volus, though. Maybe, then, I can you see their standpoint? You want a race that can fully contribute, that can hold their own. Not saying that they can't. We don't know anything about the Volus yet, but there must be something that the Council sees that the Volus just aren't ready, I guess? And then Spectres, wow. Above the law, literally. Do whatever the fuck they want. What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the Council consisted of representatives from the Asari and Salarians, the two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since then, the three Council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community while preserving individual autonomy for each species. Sounds too perfect. Yeah, so let's see, the Sari and the Salarians formed the council. The Turians came in because of great deeds in the Krogan Rebellion. Maybe that's why they're keeping the, the Volus out. They haven't really proven themselves and had done anything of great significance. And that's what seems like what's pulling races to join the Citadel Council. It can't be as simple as that. There must be problems somewhere in the system. I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. Alright, Avena Toodles, have a good day. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for using Avena.
Don't Please you love enjoy it? your visit to the Citadel. I sure will. I'm gonna enjoy every moment of this damn shit. Don't you just love when you talk to somebody and you get XP just for talking to people? That's so great. Where are we at? Right here? Let's check in over in these areas here. Embassy Lounge? Oh, that's where the hell we are going, baby. Let's go get a drink. Time to get drunk. But check in with these areas. And she said the executor... Was it executor? Look at this, mother. Oh, my word. I can't believe I landed a job here. This place is fantastic. Are we just stealing people's passwords on the internet here? What was he looking at? Oh, my... Look at this. Oh my fucking word. I don't even remember what the hell these were called. Excuse me. How you doing? What are you playing? Fucking Pac-Man? Elcor Diplomat? Human, delighted, welcome. It is good to meet you. Oh my word. Look at these aliens. They're so awesome. Hold on, is this the way we came in? That's the way we came in, right? Executor Palin, right here. Oh, shit. Hold on, there's something back here first. We're gonna go steal his computer information. Easy decryption. Oh. Diplomatic advisory warning. The following message was transmitted from an untraceable account to multiple recipients across the extra net. Oh my word, they call it extranet instead of internet? <laughs> Further monitoring of the situation is warranted, my fellow biotic. You have been selected to receive this transmission because of our shared plight. Few understand us, fewer tolerate us. We must stand together, we must build our own new world. Come join us in the Hawking Ada Cluster only as one body can we right the wrongs done to our kind. My fellow biotic, we are a biotic, Caden is a biotic, and this is other biotics that are being oppressed that want to build their own world. That's going to go over well. Palin? Let's talk to Palin. We definitely need to get to the council, though. Commander Shepard, I didn't expect to see you here. Did Ambassador Udina send you? Who are you? I go where I want. I go where I want. <laughs> Nobody sends me anywhere. I just need some information. You humans are always so curious. Always sticking your fingers into someone else's pie. Is that the right expression? Ah, uh, never mind. Forget I asked. Was there something you needed, Commander? Maybe we should have investigated. <laughs> Attitude to our human specter, CSEC, and investigation. Oh, let's start at the top. I get the feeling you're not too fond of humans. No, I just don't trust your kind. Not yet. You humans are eager to take all the power you can get, and you're being given a lot. If the Council wants to make humanity their new favorite pet, that's their business. But I don't have to like it. I don't think we're favorites by any means there, friend. The Council treats us like second-class citizens. We have to fight for everything we get. Good. Then fight for it. But don't expect the rest of us to just sit back and let you take it. I'm a busy man, Commander. Are we done here? He does not like humans whatsoever. His face paint is freaking awesome. What do you know about the Spectres? They're the right hand of the Counselor, so they like to be called. More like the underhanded side of the Council. What do you have against the Spectres? I can't abide any organization that considers itself above the law. Especially when it's left up to each individual Spectre to decide when and how to bend the rules. Naive. Sometimes you have to bend the law to keep people safe. I've been with CSEC for 30 years. I've never had to break the law to do my job, not once. Yeah, right. You expect us to believe none of your officers are corrupt? There are over 200,000 CSEC agents. Some of them are going to be bad. But we don't turn a blind eye to corruption like the Spectres do. We do our best to find and punish any officer who breaks the law. Spectres. <laughs> They'll never come under that kind of scrutiny. Spectres are important. Are they really important? So far, we only seen how... Well, Nyla seemed pretty awesome, actually. Maybe they're important in their own way. Undercover type. Do things that you... Regular 
law enforcement other companies can't do. The galaxy needs people like that. People who do the dirty jobs. I agree. But they need to be held to a higher standard. They need to be accountable. Saren's out of control. We both know that. But because he's a Spectre, the Council doesn't want to do anything about it. Is that the kind of person this galaxy needs? If it gets the job done and no, they don't all have to be like Saren, you know? But not all Spectres are like Saren. True. But the potential is always there. C-Sec and Investigation all. Hopefully he's got something. Tell me about C-Sec. C-Sec provides necessary police and security services throughout the Citadel. We're a civilian government agency, though many of our members have had military training. Of course, as the C-Sec representative to the Council, I spend most of my time liaising between the two. Well, there we go. Tell me about your investigation into Saren. Sorry, Commander. I don't make a habit of giving out details about ongoing investigations. We're on the same side here. I'll be going now. Goodbye, Commander. He's inside his head. He's thinking, goodbye, Commander. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. <laughs> what a swell guy. This is the bar. What's up? Look at the aliens just loving life, friends. They're just chilling. She's looking at me like, get the fuck out of my space. <laughs> this place seems strange. I wish there were more humans around. I don't know. I think I would love it if I was kind of some of the only humans here. You have to be tough with these aliens. They won't respect you otherwise. It's good to see another human face around here. If I have to listen to another Hanar take 20 minutes to say the simplest thing, I think I'll scream. What? This place seems strange. I wish there were more humans around. Private Frederick? Don't believe the rumors. The consort would never reveal her secrets. Of course she wouldn't. She'd be tossed at the nearest airlock if she did. Uh, I suppose. Besides, Nick, the consort's nothing like the girls back on the colonies. <laughs> she's... she's... You don't have to do it with her. You can just talk to her if you want. Is that all you did, Jazz? Just talk? I didn't say that. Ha! I bet you did too. Shut up, Fredericks. Oh, they're fucking arguing here over who... Let's just talk. What do you want? Oh, Commander. Is there something I can do for you? Relax, Private. This isn't an inspection. Right, sorry. What can I do for you, Commander? Look at his haircut. Oh my word. We should have gave Atticus that haircut. It's so silky looking. I just want to run my fucking fingers through it. What can you tell me about the Asari consort? I, uh, well, she's an Asari who works here as, that is, she helps people with things. You never went to see her, did you, Fredericks? I, uh, no, I never did. Uh, I couldn't afford it. It costs half a year's credits just to go in and talk to her. Where is she? Can you at least tell me where I can find her? Sure. She's across the bridge from the embassies. Thanks, kid. Have fun. Try not to get into too much trouble. I will. Have fun, that is. <laughs> He's gonna get in all types of trouble, Ash. Are you kidding me? Commander, good to see you again. Good to see you again, silky hair. Alright, let's talk to... The Santa? I don't have time to talk now. I'm very busy. Oh, a meme? I don't have time to talk now. I'm very busy. Bartender? Hello, Commander. Can I get you something? Everybody knows who we are before we even introduce ourselves. You know who I am? Your arrival uh, created a bigger than average stir among the diplomats and hangers on around here. There's always something new happening around here. I could fill you in on some points of interest if you'd like. Yeah, please. What's going on around here? Well, you found the embassies. Not much going on here. Across the bridge, you'll find the bank, the Emporium, and Shaira's. If you haven't heard of her, you soon will. If you need supplies, you can try the markets one level below. For entertainment, I'd try Flux or Cora's Den. We definitely just heard about Shaira's. What is Shaira's? The consort? Uh, she entertains clients who can afford her services. Most of the diplomats and ambassadors have visited her at one time or another. She's a very powerful woman, but also very respected. Space brothel? Tell me about Flux and Cora's Den. Well, Flux has gambling and dancing, certainly more lively than this place. 
Korra's den, on the other hand, well, let's just say it's livelier and deadlier all at the same time. Well, that's where we're heading, most definitely. Goodbye. So long, Commander. Have a pleasant day. Maybe the brothel first, though. It's just there's nothing out here. All right. Let's head on to... We need to head to the council area. Let's look at the journal here. Strange transmission. Let's... Does it... Oh, it doesn't... All right. So we'll have to click this down for it to stop blinking. I like that it's blinking because it shows that we didn't read it yet. And we'll read that once we actually do stuff. Exposed CERN. You have to prove to the Citadel Council that Saren, one of their Spectre agents, has gone rogue. Short, simple, and to the point. Go to the tower. Go to the Citadel Tower on the Presidium for an audience with the Council. Let's head to the Citadel Tower then. We have been traipsing around for a good deal, and we didn't really get too much done with the main quest itself. But we did get a good deal of lore with the races and kind of how the Citadel Council... Oh, what the hell is this? That leaves? Kind of how the Citadel is in its own way. Look at it. It's just so grand. And the music. The elevator to Seasec Academy is located down the ramp to the left. The Alliance docking bay can be found there. Easy peasy. To Citadel Tower. The Citadel Tower is tall, white, structured, far off. To your right. It houses the council and their heart of the Citadel politics. Look at this, friends. It's so fucking beautiful. I love it. It's got us going. Hold on. Use Citadel Rapid Transit to travel quickly between major locations as you explore the Citadel and more locations will unlock. Alright, well, we'll take this buggy here. Whatever it is. Space golf cart. Presidium locations. Citadel Tower. Let's do it. Wow. Look how big this, just take it in, how grand this citadel must be. I, we need to read on how big this citadel actually is. It looks absolutely massive from this, that scope right there. Is that Palin? How the fuck did you get up here, man? Teleporting? Palin? Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council. Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. You absolutely blew it. What did you find? You don't like Saren? He does not seem to like Saren. Sounds like you really want to bring him down. I don't trust him. Something about him rubs me the wrong way. But he's a specter. Everything he touches is classified. I can't find any hard evidence. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Yeah, right? You don't want to keep the council waiting. You don't want to keep the council waiting. Are you sure? Let's keep them mother effers waiting. Look at this. Let's take it in. Let's look at the map here. Wow. Council Chambers is right directly in the middle. Is there anyone up here that we can fucking bullshit with? <laughs> keep the council waiting even more. Look at her head. It looks so fucking awesome. Wow. I love it. We need to definitely... <laughs> the council is going to be so pissed. We took about 10 years to get to him. Wait. Don't be ridiculous. The Volus won't be joining the council for years. I'm not so sure. The humans are making a strong push. And you can bet the Volus will be right on their coattails if they succeed. Allowing the humans to join us is a sound strategic move. But the Volus? No. The Hanar are likely to be next, then the Elcor. You may be right. Though the Hanar need to lighten up a bit first. You just don't like them because you have trouble understanding them. Give them a chance. They're probably wonderful beings. Let's head over to... Let's just go up. Let's talk to Anderson. Let's do it. Citadel Council. Here we go. The hearing's already started. Come on. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. 
The investigation by Citadel security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre, and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. That was you, not me. How did you get involved? Interesting how he would get involved. The mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. I read the Eden Prime report. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? Typical insults? You'll pay? Yeah, you'll fucking pay. You can expect me to kill you the next time we meet. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that! That's not his decision! Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor. And mine. Wow, we can go full force, renegade, completely. You arrogant bastard? Yes. You can't hide behind the council forever. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? You won't see the truth. What's the point? There's just not enough evidence, friends. Let's be honest. There just really is enough. How are you going to take Shepard's dreams? It ain't even a dream. How are you going to take his vision into consideration here? And then the traumatized dock worker? Was it the one that we put a gun in his face? <laughs> we need to find more. You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. This meeting is adjourned. Odina looks like he's about to cry. <laughs> It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. At least someone's taking it serious. Odina, I don't even know where he stands, but at least Anderson's taking this shit serious. How do you know Saren? The Council won't help us? Tell me about this history between you and Saren. I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here. But I know what he's like. And he has to be stopped. What's our next step? As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the Executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. I don't trust him. Well, that's... How do, we, don't, we don't even know him to not trust him. Yeah, we'll definitely talk to him. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, <laughs> drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. I'm on it. I don't like this. The Captain deserves better. Yeah, man, stop treating fucking Anderson like this before I throw you off the balcony here. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. 
You want me to go see him? Any other leads? Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the financial district. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barla Vaughn's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren. But his information won't come cheap. What about you and Saren? Let's ask them about him and Saren. What else? Oh my word, Anderson. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way. Innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience. No hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. That story right there is in the books. I read that book quite a long time ago. The book was about Anderson. And it was pretty much humanity's first push into this bigger hole. And it was so long ago, I don't remember it fully. But it is indeed a book if you are interested in hearing about this story in general. So would I. He's a monster. He's a fucking monster. Killing innocents doesn't end wars. It causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. We can say so would I. It didn't go away. Sometimes a thousand people must die so a million can live. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. Council and the Ambassador, let's just start. So far, the Shadow Broker seems so interesting. I can't wait to learn about that. Our Ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the Council. He's just frustrated. The Council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us out. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the council. The ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. Odina wants to be part of the Citadel Council. He seems like an ultimate fucking scumbag so far. What about you and Cern? We're too independent. Why do we bother? Maybe they'd let us join the council if we were more willing to cooperate with the other species. Of course they would. If we did everything they told us to, They'd love to have us on the council, but it wouldn't be much of a deal for us. I understand their side. They don't want us dominating the council. It's founded on cooperation and alliances. But we have to look out for our own interests, too. I think humanity would be... The council itself right now, I would think that it seems the Turians are probably the... Just from reading their codexes and kind of how... That guy was talking about it. It seems like they are the strong arm of the council, almost. We'll read about the other two races in time, but I feel like humanity will be like a blunt force type race. Does that make sense? Like, humanity is a very stubborn... We, I mean, we are stubborn humans. And I could imagine it would probably collide with the other races. But then again, I mean, maybe it will change humanity, which would be good. Who cares if we get a seat on the Council? What's the big deal? If the Council passes a ruling on an interstellar matter, we have to follow it. We don't have the fleets or political allies to defy them. Once we get a seat on the Council, we'll be able to influence those rulings. Protect our own interests. No more jumping through hoops whenever we want something. Take this mess we're in now. If humanity had a seat on the Council, we just send the Citadel fleet out to take care of Saren and his geth. Problem solved. Point taken, Anderson. Indeed. You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Roughing up suspects in custody, bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. He joined CSEC roughly 20 years ago, he said, or 20 years ago. And the other one, Avina said that we joined the, the embassy 19 years ago. 
then it would seem that humanity's probably came in contact with these other races well before 20 years. So it might be just more than that. We won't know until we actually find something on it. Why protect him? They abandoned him? The guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first human CSEC officers. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes, but it looks like his time's run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting him. I thought this embassy was supposed to help humans. Harkin may be human, but he's also an ass. He's had more than his share of chances. If the embassy wasn't protecting him, he would have been fired 15 years ago. CSEC is better off without him. Spectres. I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. Wow, we got a lot here. So how are they chosen? How are they organized? Is this legal if one goes too far? Anderson knows a lot. How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done. Like you. They've been watching you for years. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation. But with him gone, things are still up in the air. If that mission went good, we'd have probably been a Spectre. What's their command structure like? There is no command structure. Each Spectre answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law, do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, Shepard. They seem like they're just about as more powerful as the Citadel Council, friends. Wow. They sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents. The last line of defense. The final option before open war. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. Spectres are left or right hands of the Council, basically. That's exactly what we're getting at right here. What happens when a Spectre goes rogue, like Saren? It doesn't happen often. The Council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another Spectre to bring the rogue agent down. Well, if you think about it, Spectre's left and right hands of the Council, I don't know which one, one of them. And then the Citadel Council is the leaders of the galaxy. They literally, presidents, ambassadors, whatever, that means nothing. The Citadel Council is the ultimate rulers of the whole galaxy. Wow. Spectres, let's look at Shadow Broker and Bartle of Vaughn. Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. He's a necessary evil of galactic politics. Buying and selling information is a part of the game. And the Shadow Broker just happens to be the best player on the field. Always sells to the highest bidder. Doesn't get involved in politics. Doesn't pick sides. A simple system, but it works. He's not a threat to anyone. Not directly. He's just a resource we can use. Or she is. Or maybe they are. Nobody really knows. They have all the information of the galaxy, pretty much. You would think. The buyer and seller of information. Wow. Tell me about Barlavon. He specializes in moving large sums of money without leaving a paper trail. A financial genius. Doesn't do anything illegal. But he knows all the loopholes. He's got an impressive client list. Ambassadors, diplomats, specters. That's probably why the Shadow Broker uses him. Well, that would be that. I think we'll go to Barlavon. First, because that's who Anderson wanted us to go to. I should go. Good luck, Shepard. I'll be over in the ambassador's office if you need anything else. Sorry, Anderson. It'd be cool if you can come with us, friend. Barlavon first, and then we check out this Harkin. Wow. So, this is where the Council passes judgment on all us little folk, huh? Ever get the feeling we're in over our heads, Commander? We are most definitely in over our heads, Ash. This is it. 
The very heart of the Citadel, the pinnacle of galactic power. Kind of makes your head spin if you think about it too much. It sure the hell does, Caden. It is a lot to take in. Wow. Let's see. We have the Shadow Broker. We have Citadel Garrus and Exposed Saren. Let's look at Shadow Broker. Hold on. Head to the bank in the financial district of the Presidium and speak with Bar Lavon. Head to the bank in the financial district. Okay, same thing. Well, we will do... I'm thinking we'll do the Shadow Broker stuff first, then Garrus. What is Exposed Saren? You have to prove to the Citadel Council that Saren, one of their Spectre agents, has gone rogue. We have no information. Nothing. No evidence. You need to find some proof that Saren is connected with the Geth. We find something to do with maybe Garrus, like, like I said, maybe Garrus will know, or the Shadow Broker buying and selling information. So this is actually two pretty darn good leads. At least the Shadow Broker sounds like it would be a really good lead because they buy and sell all types of information. And then Garrus said he was close. So that's another piece of information that we need. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save here. We have covered the ground. Such a lot of lore in this game. It's so rich. And just, it's just, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just so rich and it like envelops you in. I'm already so sucked into this galaxy. Immediately, just by starting the first little bit of trek here on the Citadel. It just feels so... It all goes so well together, man. I don't know how else to explain it besides just saying it's really fucking amazing. And I just can't wait to dig in and learn more as we go. I'm just so ecstatic and happy that we're doing this because I just can't wait to learn more. I'm nerding out so much that I just want to keep just want to keep going. But anyways, my friends, I'm going to save here. When we head back, like I said, we're going to head over to the Bottle of Vaughn person. Take it from there and see where the wind blows us. See where the information fucking points us. Anyways, take it easy. Have a good one. Stay safe. See you next time. Take care.